Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. My name is Evelyn of Pink Sheep Design, and this is the return of Pink Sheep and Friends for 2023. So this is technically episode 40 of Pink Sheep and Friends, so that's super exciting. Um, and if for any reason um, you are not able to watch this entire live, if you're not able to join in live um, for the full amount of time, these are posted to my YouTube channel in their own special playlist. Um, and it is at youtube.com slash pink sheep design. Uh, and you can watch all 40 episodes if you want something fun to binge watch. Um, pink sheep and friends is all about, um, meeting new people in the fiber community. So it is the opportunity for me to help you grow your community, get to know new makers, find new people to follow, new people to get inspired by. Um, and it's all different people from within, the, from within the fiber world. I've talked to people who crochet as a hobby, um, people who make it their full-time business, part-time business, people who dye yarn, um, people who make hooks, all of everybody is welcome from the fiber community. And I may end up at some point also branching out to other makers. I actually have a super exciting collaboration coming up. Well, uh, with someone who is not in the fiber world. Um, so you guys can stay tuned for that because that's going to be coming up in just a week, I think. I get to announce um, a really, really fun collaboration uh, and you guys will get to meet that person as well. Um, yeah, so this is Desmond the Lemon. If you did not see my reel, this is the newest design that is part of the apparel line for Pink Sheep Design. Um, and that's it. This is Desmond and this is his mantra for 2023. Be better, not better. Um, so without further ado, we are going to bring on today's guest, Madison. And let's see, I think she has already requested to join. Yes. So Stellar Threads by Madison. Hack it in. So super excited. Okay. Fingers crossed that it works. Hey! Hello! How's it going? Oh, look at your sweatshirt! I was gonna say, first things first, like, I had to wear this today. <laughs> oh, that makes me so happy! Clothes. Yes, I always get compliments on it when I go out. They're like, high fiber diet? Oh, it's yarn! <laughs> yes! That's awesome! Well, and that's also, um, that particular sweatshirt is really fun because it comes in, like, the lighter colors, yeah, which is really nice. Because usually, like, the generic ones come in, like, the darker, more, like, vibrant tones that are, like, primary colors is what I would consider yeah. it. But those, like, are really nice. If you like the lavenders and the corals and the, <laughs> you know, light gold, those are really nice. I like them. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. It's super exciting. Thanks for having me. Me. Yeah, I'm, I've always seen these, um, like you posting these, and so it's super fun to be here. So for anyone who does not know you or who you are, if you want to do just a quick little intro about what you do and who you are. Totally. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Madison. Uh, I run Stellar Threads by Madison, which is my clothing brand. And also just like this account is where I share all the stuff that I'm making and um, I've been, I crochet, I've been crocheting for, oh, I think this year will be four years. So I started like right before COVID mm -hmm. <laughs> happened. And um, yeah, I just, I'd always like wanted to make my own clothes and mm -hmm. I don't, knitting just seemed like it was harder. <laughs> so that's why I did crochet first. Um, I'm actually going to a knitting class right after this. <laughs> so cool. that's one of my goals this year though is to like expand and branch out and like learn learn other mediums I have a sewing machine too so like maybe I yeah <laughs> but yeah mostly crochet I like uh I really like making wearables I make I have a lot of like crochet patterns for bandanas mm -hmm. those are my favorite um but I've done a lot of pattern testing as well um so like for crochet by Lindsay and Sugar Rico those were two of the makers who like really helped me learn about crochet and like get involved with the community and like the longer that I do it the more that I realize that community is really like the biggest aspect of why why I care so much yeah. <laughs> about crochet like I love I love connecting with people and talking about 
what they're making and exchanging ideas. And it's just been like such a blessing. I love it. Yeah. What made you, um, what kind of flipped the switch to be like, I want to learn how to crochet. She said you only started about four years ago. Yeah. So what, what kind of took that off? <laughs> I was a very broke graduate student <laughs> and ah. I was like, well, all these crop tops are like $25. And that was a lot of money at the time. So I was like, I don't know. I think yarn and this hook and a few hours of my time is a lot cheaper. So I'll give it a try. And um, like I said, knitting, I saw the two needles and I was like, my brain literally <laughs> can't comprehend this. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to try crochet. And I actually went and bought a yarn and hook from our local yarn shop in 2018. And I started watching YouTube videos and I was like, I, I just like couldn't get it. I didn't understand. So I left it in a bag and it went to the back corner of my closet for a whole year yeah. before I was like, I'm going to give it another shot. Yeah. It, it just really stuck that time. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, and I, I do, I agree with you. You know, there, there are two schools of thought, I think, when it comes to using crochet to like make your own stuff is in one category it can be more expensive because we talk about like this fight with fast fashion you know because you could go out and buy a cardigan from tj maxx even like a chunky cardigan or whatever you're looking for for you know like probably 30 bucks now but still if you go to buy the yarn it could be upwards of a hundred dollars you know if you're looking at like the oversized stuff yeah. but depending on what you're making and where you get your yarn i know for me because you talked about crop tops um I've always struggled to find like bras that fit me in a way that I would like them to. Yeah. Um, and I found some yarn on sale. You know, I looked for like the clearance stuff and I've been able to make myself a, a huge collection of crop tops and like bralettes that fit me better than what I would pay more money for in the yeah. store. Yeah, yeah, totally. It, that like personal style aspect was mm -hmm. a really big part of it too. I think um, <laughs> coming out of college, I had a shaved head. And like, I was, oh my gosh. Like, <laughs> yeah, that was like a different lifetime. But I was like very, personal choice? what's that? Personal choice. Yeah. Just, you just liked it. Yeah. I, I had dyed my hair so much. Like it's curly now and like mm -hmm. looks normal and nice, but it was so dead. Um, yeah. So I was like, whatever, I'm just going to shave it. I was 21. I was like, well, my family, everybody's going to be like, yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I was very eclectic and I wanted pieces that were more like personal that I could style on my own. And yeah, I started, I started making a lot of crop tops. Um, they weren't very good <laughs> to start, but they've gotten a little better. <laughs> I have kept some of my oldest crop tops and I look back and I'm like, oh my gosh, what was I thinking? I just want to frog them and remake them. But then I'm like, but you know, I can really see the difference now, yeah, you know? <laughs> I, I wish one of the first things that I tried to make was a beanie and all I have left, I think I... I don't know what I did with it, but all I have is a photo of what it looked like the first time that I tried it on. And yeah, yeah just looking back, it's like, oh, you've come so far. <laughs> yes. Well, and so what made you decide you wanted to jump from just making things for yourself or as gifts or whatever to designing? Yeah. Um, have you heard that audio from Elise Myers that's like, I have the, like, I could probably do anything, Jean. It's like very, like, I could do anything almost half decent. <laughs> and so I started seeing um, people designing stuff and I was like, I don't know, I think I could probably, I could probably mm -hmm. do that. I, I might as well try. And yeah. I, yeah, I had a lot of, um, like, my family and stuff too saying like, oh, you should like try and sell your stuff or like, I would mm -hmm. buy this from you or whatever, which, you know, they're just trying to be supportive and stuff. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of thinking about like wanting to set up a passive stream of, of income. And I think pattern selling and writing is a really, really good way to do that. And it's definitely brought me closer to other people who write and design their own patterns. And I have like way, way more respect for people who um, can do that because it's a lot of work. It's like passive income, but like so much work has to go in up front. I'm sure you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think some of it too is this idea, what usually gets me through it because once I get something designed, because like I'm working on something right now, it's like in the corner of my eye and I'm like, mm, I can't wait to be able to release it. I'll show you real quick because um, it's still small enough for me to hold up in front of the camera. Aww, um, cute. This is what it looks like. Um, so it's like a 
it's like a bomber jacket, but it's like the, you know, like jumbo jumbo blanket yarn. So it's going to be part of like the power puff line. So I've got like the power puff stuff that's all made using like what you're supposed to make blankets and pet beds out of, but I decided to make clothes. Um, but you know, you look at it and it's, and it's done and you're, you're like, Oh, I can't wait to get this release. But then you're like, Oh my gosh, it's going to be like two and a half months before I can actually release it. But then it's out there forever. So like, if you put the time in, then you really do just get to forget about it. You know, as long as it's tested well and, you know, you're not going to have a ton of questions about it, yeah. then, you know, it's it, like, it's just out there, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally. And then all you really have to do is, like, remind people that it exists and, like, mm -hmm. using your mm -hmm. socials or whatever. Like, hey, by the way, I have this thing. Something that I started yeah. doing that I, I haven't seen many, like, other pattern designers do it, but I started selling my patterns in a bundle since I have, like, yes. I have... I think four out right now and they're all bandanas. So I just put mm -hmm. them on a bundle. I'm like, yes, hey, you know, you know, bundle. yeah, you can buy all of them at once. <gasps> Ashlyn just joined. Hi, Ashlyn. Woo. Sugary. Woo. <laughs> uh, but yeah. 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 So. yeah. That's smart. I need, need to do more bundles. I have, I think I have 40 something patterns now, which that's feels perfect. crazy. But then you see people who have like hundreds of patterns. I was like, I don't know how you do it. It never gets, you know, it's never like, I've reached this point. It's always like, yeah, but someone else is doing more. You know, it does feel Ooh. like that. Yeah. And how long? How long have you been writing, designing patterns? So my first pattern, I believe, was pre-COVID, and okay. it was just that one. It was just that one pattern, and then I think maybe, if I remember correctly, it was a bralette, and then I think I released one more bralette pre-COVID. So I had two that, you know, I look back on, I'm like, oh, I don't want to get rid of them because they were my first ones, but they're, you know, they've only got three sizes. They, you know, it, it my, my structure and the form of the, what it look, the pattern looks like is very different. Um, but then I, I kind of took a hiatus. I had taken on a full-time job and it wasn't until COVID when I started working remotely again, that I had time. And I said, okay, it's time to try this again because I think this could be lucrative and, and fun. Sure. Um, and so it wasn't until COVID that I really, really threw myself into like the pattern designing side of things. Nice. That's awesome. I just assumed when you said you had like 40 or more patterns that you've been doing it for like well, <laughs> 10 years or well, something. And, you know, and some of them are smaller. Like that's, yeah. you know, I, I tried, I try to mix it in and not take on like a cardigan every single time and like throw in some different hat patterns and, you know, um, so that helps a little bit. Like I've got some patterns that are really, really simple. And I, you know, tried to start doing like YouTube videos and things like that for the, yeah. you know, the little ones. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy to see that, but I, I was saying I only have, I think two bundles and <laughs> it's like the first, it's like a sweater and a cardigan yeah. that came out together and they're in a bundle. And then I have a craft show bundle. That's like all of the things that, sold really well for me that was like my lineup at craft shows um and that was i wanted to ask you have you ever sold at craft shows or is that ever a goal or something you want to yeah, do yeah i've been having this like internal debate with myself about like do i just want to do i want to make stuff and like sell it because i see that there are kind of like two paths that you could go you could have like an online shop you could sell the stuff that you make and that's super mm -hmm. fun i'd say that's like what most people do myself yeah. included right now but I think there's this other route that hasn't completely been explored where there's like an avenue for just like being a creator and like doing YouTube videos and making money off of your reels and stuff and I I be, do, doing business is really important and like has its own um like way you have to structure things and way you have to do things I feel like I'm in terms of the, like between being creative and business stuff like the creative things just come way way easier for me and it kind of yeah. feels like I'm forcing it almost so uh I'm trying to lean like more into the creator making content like starting a YouTube channel that's one of my big oh there we go oh it's okay it mutes you that's why I was like I figure that's what it was yeah yeah <laughs> um yeah and then so anyways, to answer your question, I've done cra a craft show before. I think maybe for me, I didn't sell that many things, but I think I, I didn't pick a market that was, that had like my ideal customer there. It was more, it was a little bit bougier <laughs> than what I thought I was signing up for. Um, but it was still cool. Like I got to meet 
a lot of makers and part of the reason I wanted to do it was to just like chat with other people in the community and find out their, yeah. their experience with things. So do you yeah. do, you do think, markets a lot? So I did for, I think it was two years that I did markets very regularly. I mean, that was the main thing I was doing was markets. I wasn't selling patterns. I wasn't selling anything digital. Um, I was doing patterns and I was doing photography. So those were like the two income streams that I was doing all in person kind of stuff. Um, and I re realized I couldn't keep up with the demand of making the stuff yeah. to be able to sell. Like I hit a ceiling. I was like, there, I'd have to hire people to like make things, um, you know, and it, it just felt like this will never be something that I could just do for a living. Like I would need another job or my husband would need to be working. Like something else would have to be there. Um, but like you said, it was an amazing way to have that local community. So like you've got to know so many people. And one of my favorite things that came out of that was meeting a bunch of other makers. And then uh, for those two years, I did a photo shoot day where I would contact all of the makers that I knew. And I was like, let's all bring our stuff and photograph it all together. You know, so like everybody will have model photos and things. And so it was such a fun community driven thing that came out of that and so I tell people all the time if you have the opportunity to do craft shows even if it's not going to be a huge money maker for you you're going to make so many friends and yeah. you know so many creative contacts like you never know what kind of opportunities will come from that yeah yeah totally and I, I would do another one I think I would just be a little bit like pickier about which like which ones I actually end up uh signing yeah. up for and yeah, there were a lot of like vintage resellers, but it was at this um, mm -hmm. like well care marketplace. So there were a lot of people who do like massage and Reiki and yeah. um, sell like silver and gold jewelry kind of thing. And yeah. um, I can't, I showed up with like this pink ass Christmas tree and <laughs> like I, I definitely stood out. <laughs> well, and I, I think uh, what usually is good is if you can go, if you can go to markets, like if you can take yeah. a whole year to just like go to the markets, even if you're not going to make money, like and shop, and then you can see like, are these the kind of people that would like my stuff? Is any of this similar? That can be super, super helpful. Yeah. Love getting inspiration <laughs> from, from others, especially like ones who aren't even, who don't crochet or knit. Like I love yes. finding people who I didn't like paint and use colors mm -hmm. in interesting ways that's one of my one of my favorite things to do on instagram or or in person <laughs> so where, where do you feel like most of your inspiration comes from so when you're like i'm going to design a piece or i'm making something for myself like colors um you know the look of the design yeah, yeah. i i mean i'm a big lover of pinterest can't go mm -hmm. wrong with pinterest <laughs> yeah um pinterest I, is not dead. no no way. I feel like it's in like a renaissance age where it's only like, it's just getting better. It's just getting better. Mm -hmm. I've been, I think I've been on Pinterest since like yeah. 2012, probably mm -hmm. crazy. I can't believe it's still around. Um, I love Pinterest. I've been trying though, like now, you know, I, things are relatively normal where I live. So you can go out in person more. So I'm trying to make more time to just like spend time in the real world and like people watch. That's one of my favorite things to do is just look at people. <laughs> Cause I live, I don't, where, where do you live? We are actually in Alabama. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> oh yeah, Bible Belt. <laughs> I, I have a friend who's from Alabama, it's so funny. Uh, yeah, and I, so I, I live in like outside of Denver and I, mm -hmm. I like just spending like time in the city at a coffee shop. I yeah. have a remote job too, so I can just go like hang out at a coffee shop and like just people watch for a while. Mm -hmm. I think, I don't think that personally I'd be able to do this if I didn't have like the remote job too. And Makes a big difference. What do you, if you don't mind me asking, and if you don't mind sharing, what do you do as your remote job? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, I work for a, like, a telehealth, mental health company in marketing. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, so, and it's, and it's marketing. Yeah. So how do you feel like that has affected, do you feel like it helps you with your, your crochet side, the business there? Like, how is that connection for you? Totally. I, I think it's like mutually beneficial for both positions. I've learned a ton about social media marketing because of Stellar Threads and I have I have a writing background. So that's mostly what I do, like writing emails um, for this company. And that has definitely come in handy for uh, my like Instagram account. I'm mostly on Instagram, not really yeah. any other <laughs> social media. Yeah, so, yeah, like the skills are 
are definitely transferable. I wasn't, I wasn't always in marketing though. I, <laughs> when I was getting my master's degree, it was in public health actually. And that was, I graduated in 2020, like right when the pandemic was happening. Yeah. So I had a couple jobs in public health for like a year. And then I was like, I don't really like this that much actually. So I'm going to try and switch. And that was kind of the same time that I was learning how to crochet and everything. Um, and like starting to take it more seriously and trying to yeah. write stuff. That's good. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It all, all worked out. It's crazy. Like, it's just crazy. You never know where you're going to end up. You really, really don't. It doesn't matter what your degree was in. It doesn't matter what your previous jobs were. I think there are so many opportunities to learn new things and like move in a different direction with like your entire life. I think now more than ever, I think. Yeah, definitely. So I'm, yeah, I'm excited to see what happens. I'm taking this knitting class because I've, I've had some ideas where I'm like, I, I love crochet cardigans. Sometimes I feel like um, the sleeves could maybe be shaped a little better. And I've seen examples with like knit sleeves and I think they're gorgeous. So yeah. that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to, to make <laughs> first and foremost, once yeah. I actually learn how to purl correctly. <laughs> yeah, I have, um, literally I'll show you. I have, um, one jar and it just sits up and looks pretty. I have one yeah. jar of knitting needles. Gorgeous. And these are, these are actually my favorite and I've never used them because I received them after I kind of quit knitting, but they're pink. Oh no, you were knitting and then you quit. So it, it was really like, I started, I think if I remember correctly, the first thing I learned to do was knit because this was in high school. So like, you know, picked it up, learned it and then put it away for a very long time. Um, and yeah, when I started crocheting again, started crocheting and knitting again, knitting was a pretty big part of it. So it was kind of like a 50 50, like there were certain things that I knit and certain things that I crocheted. Um, but I never felt comfortable designing knitwear. So like I could follow a pattern, basic patterns and, um, but I never felt felt that freedom of like, oh, I could make it do this. But with crochet, I felt like I had so much more freedom and I understood how to like make it make shapes, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. So I just haven't picked them back up. I was like, I'll never say never. They're beautiful. They'll sit up on my my um, bookshelf until they call to me again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. totally. I feel like, yeah, it's just like nice to learn and have the foundations and then it's always there for you whenever yeah. you need it. And for me personally, I, a lot of my motivation for learning these things is like, okay, I didn't know this, but uh, after I started getting more serious about crochet, I found out that my grandma was like huge into crochet and knitting and Aww. she passed away like a, like a long time ago when I was really young. And um, mm -hmm. my parents recently told me that they had a whole stash of like her old needle, like crochet hooks, needles, books and stuff. Aww, they, like, that's they, awesome. They, ended up giving them away though because that was like if I hadn't started crochet yeah. yet and then they were like oh did you know we had all these I was like oh my god like what <laughs> that would have been didn't tell me that yeah right I'm like oh I wish I knew but I'm yeah there's no way to know um but yeah so like I would have loved to now like if my grandma was still around I would love to like ask her questions and yeah. learn from her so I really hope that I can pass that down to like my kids, my nieces and nephews and that kind of thing. So that's definitely that's my motivation as well. Well, so we've got like five more minutes. I don't want to keep you too long. So don't be late for your class. Um, but for 2023, because it is the new year. Do you, are you the type of person who is a goal setter? Do you actually like write down like, this is what I'm going to learn this year? Or are you just like, you know, let it, the ideas be in your head and see what happens? <laughs> I should, I should be writing down my goals. I definitely have them like in my mind, like I said, knitting is one of them. Mm -hmm. I'd say learning how to knit and um, starting my YouTube channel is are like top of the list. And I actually yeah. recorded a tutorial and a, a, another YouTube video and I spent a few hours editing them and then Canva like crashed and didn't save it at all. So I like trying to learn how to use Adobe Premiere Pro because now I have trust issues with Canva. Um, so yeah. those are like my two my two big um, goals in terms of like crafts and creator things. Like I mentioned, I I so I don't know if you have like Reels bonuses on Instagram, but I've had them for I don't know maybe like six months now, and it's great. Like mm -hmm. it's it's awesome earning money from your content. Yeah. But I have a friend who 
does YouTube and she like, it's so much different because you, you stop getting paid for views on reels like after a month, but she yes. has two videos that are out there yeah. that still like bring in money for her. And I'd love to just yeah. focus more on like the, like promoting people, making, making their own clothes, sustainability, like focusing on slow fashion and um, like just having your own sense of style. And I think a lot of that comes from making your own, your own clothes and not just yeah. generic stuff at H&M, even though I do that sometimes too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love, I love that you have a focus for the YouTube channel as well, because I think a lot of people just think, well, I have to just make tutorials or I have to, you know, if you treat it more like a, like a vlog or a podcast yeah. with video, because there's not a lot out there. I mean, I know, or it's just hiding from me on YouTube because I know I've gone on YouTube and I've been like typing crochet podcast and it's usually either someone just sharing what they've made that week, which can still be interesting. But if you have no like connection with that person already, you're probably not going to watch it. Yeah. Um, or it's like a tutorial, you know? Yeah. So if you could find a niche of something that's interesting and crochet related and you can kind of create your own series, that would be really beneficial, yeah. I think. Yeah, totally. I agree. When I look for crochet content, it's mostly tutorials. And, like, those are, su those are super helpful, honestly. Mm -hmm. Even now, I feel like for a while I stopped watching them because I was like, oh, I could just read patterns yeah. or stitch diagrams or something. But um, I was just recently watching one, and I was like, oh, wait, this is helpful. I should, <laughs> I yeah. should look here more often. Um, yeah, but I, I, I do think there's, like, a lot of, room for people to share about crochet in different ways and it doesn't even have to be doesn't even have to be crochet necessarily obviously there's like a lot of crossover between crochet and knit yes so I think encouraging people to try both and making content for like both um communities would be great and yeah just like the overall combining that with sustainable fashion like yeah. style knit fashion I feel like that in and of itself could be its could be its own thing. Like I love um, Hope McCulley. Have you seen her her work? I don't think so. There, she, You'll have to send me. Yeah, I will after this. Um, she makes like really chunky knitwear, like knit sweaters and bralettes, and they're very colorful. Did, did she just do a collab with We Are Knitters? Uh, I think it's Wool in the Gang. But yeah, One of she those. did just do a collab. Yeah, One of those. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they they like blend together in my mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then yes, yeah. I do. You know who you're talking about. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, like I, I love that kind of stuff. So that's my that's a like dream goal for me is getting to collaborate with like a company like that and like either have like my own line of yarn that they do or like pattern. I don't know. I don't know. But I was like, one day they're going to respond and say, yes, we would like to work with yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> 100%. And I that's part of another part of my motivation for wanting to pursue like the more creator route is like if it if it can open opportunities for other designers, like to have these collabor collaborations with the big companies, like I think that's super important in like establishing the the culture because we're really at this point. It's like a, a another like crochet like renaissance. I already used that word once yeah. today, but oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like there's so so many people who have taken it up. Like it really had a dead period for. Mm -hmm a while where it wasn't that popular it was like, but I, like underground it was like it, there was definitely still a strong community but i think that it has just been coming out more and more and more and COVID obviously helped with so many people staying home and wanting to pick up new hobbies um but i think that it's definitely more like people are noticing so much more now like the crochet and tv shows and the crochet and movies like look what happened with wednesday adams like, yeah I know, right? everybody's making snoods and vests and lace collars and you know, the fact that TV shows are featuring it, too. So it's obvious it's seeing that that pickup in fashion as well, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. It's amazing. I'm super excited for what's to come. I think it's going to be a big, big year for Christmas. I'm excited, and, and... too. <laughs> well, we'll have to bring you back on, too. I'm, I'm, yeah. I know I'm going to start doing, like, catch back ups this year. I'm going to bring people back on that I talked to last year um, and, you know, see what everybody has been up to. Um, but enjoy your knitting class. Thanks to everyone who came and who watched the live. If you missed some of it, you can catch it over on my YouTube channel in just the next couple of hours, or you can rewatch it here. So it'll be on my feed. Um, but thank you so much, Madison. And I hope you have fun yeah. and I hope you have a great weekend and I hope everybody has a great weekend. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. 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 Happy Bye, hunting.